Welcome again to Cardiology Keys, and let's unlock another concept for anyone with cardiology interest. And today, we will approach an introduction to bradyarrhythmia. In order to build the foundation for bradyarrhythmia, there are a few concepts that need to be reviewed. Today, we will review automaticity and dramatropic activity, AV delay and AV synchrony, basic mechanisms and basic causes for bradyarrhythmia, sinus node physiology, and overdrive suppression. The cardiac electrical activity is governed by two properties, impulse generation or automaticity and impulse propagation or dromotropic activity. Automaticity is the property by which electrical impulses are generated. Dromotropic activity is the property by which depolarization waves or impulses generated by the automatic cells are propagated to the myocardial cells to cause them to contract. Cardiac electrophysiological properties are the results of presence of functionally specialized cells that act as impulse generators and conductors. First, we have the sinoatrial node, or the SA node, in the right atrium, from which generated impulses are conducted downwards through the atrial muscles towards the AV node using internodal tracts and to the left atrium through the Buckman bundle. Electrical impulses then reach the AV node and then travel downwards through the His bundle which then divides into the left and right bundles. The left bundle further divides into the anterior and posterior hemifascicles to supply the left ventricle and the right bundle supplies the right ventricle. Both bundles then feed at their ends Purkinje fibers to both ventricles. As we said, automaticity is the ability to generate impulses. In general, any area of the myocardium has automatic abilities, however, at different rates. Overall, the SA node, the AV node, and the AV bundle have the highest depolarization rates and abilities to act as pacemakers of the heart. The general rule is, the area with the highest depolarization rates take over and becomes the pacemaker. The SA node as such is the normal pacemaker of the heart with a rate ranging normally between 60 and 100 beats per minute. Again, as we said, conduction is the ability of the cardiac tissue to propagate a depolarization wave generated by the pacemaker two myocardial cells that react by contraction. As with automaticity, all cardiac tissue has the ability to conduct an impulse, but at different velocities, which tend to increase as we go downwards in the conduction system, with the exception of the AV node, which shows an abrupt slowing. Accordingly, in general, impulse generation rate, or automaticity, is highest at the SA node, thus the pacemaker, and decreases downhill in the conduction system. Conversely, the impulse propagation speed or dramatropic property is lowest at the SA node and increases downhill to reach maximum at the bundle branches and the Purkinje fibers, with the exception of the AV node that shows temporary slowing causing what is referred to as AV delay. From the EKG perspective, we know that normal P wave represents atrial depolarization, which occurs with normal impulse generation through the SA node. Normal QRS complex represents ventricular depolarization, which occurs as a result of normal conduction through the Purkinje fibers, while the T wave is the hallmark of ventricular repolarization. That's why the PR interval in the normal AKG is the product of the slowness of conduction in the AV node and thus represents AV delay. But why is it the case that AV delay occurs? The answer to that is by having a delay in impulse propagation between the atrium and the ventricle at the level of the AV node, we also delay the ventricular contraction in relation to atrial contraction. The result is that the atrium and the ventricle contract alternatively, allowing for atrial emptying into a relaxing ventricle, also called AV synchrony. Now, coming to the topic of bradyarrhythmia, if cardiac electrical activity is the result of impulse generation and impulse propagation, then 
Bradyarrhythmia can be defined as partial or complete failure in impulse generation or conduction. While those two pathophysiological mechanisms affect anywhere along the conduction system, however, the two most clinically relevant phenotypes of cardiac bradyarrhythmia are sinus node dysfunction and AV nodal blockage, both of which can be the result of dysfunction in impulse generation or dysfunction in impulse propagation. The causes for bradyarrhythmia can be generally classified as physiological or pathological. The most common physiological cause is bradycardia of athletes. Pathological causes can then be classified into reversible causes or irreversible causes. Most common reversible causes include intrinsic such as trauma or ischemia and extrinsic such as drugs, autonomic dysfunction and electrolyte imbalance. While the most common irreversible causes include age-related degenerative conduction disease or infiltrative diseases. These are many causes and usually hard to memorize. What really needs to be done here is that a clinician should keep a few concepts in mind when approaching bradyarrhythmia. We should always ask ourselves, what's the mechanism? Is it due to a reversible cause or not? And is it symptomatic or not? Also remember, the most common irreversible cause is degenerative disease. Keeping those three concepts in mind will help navigate the type of bradyarrhythmia as well as help understand whether there is a need for treatment and if so, the type of that treatment. An important aspect to understand bradyarrhythmia is to study the basic sinus node structure and function. A famous model for the sinoatrial node describes its structure as composed of two types of cells. Core cells, called pacemaker or P-cells, which are responsible for the sinus node automaticity by generating depolarization waves. P-cells are surrounded by a transitional layer, or T-cells, which acts as a barrier for the spread of the depolarization waves generated by the P-cells. So, in order for the depolarization wave to spread out of the sinus node into the atrial muscle, interruptions exist within this capsule of T-cells and functions as exit pathways. So, P-cells produce depolarization wave that exits the capsule of T-cells through exit pathways. When P-cells depolarize, the impulse wave reaches the atrial muscle, causing atrial depolarization, which is recorded in the surface AKG as a P-wave. It's important here to understand that the P-wave recorded in the surface AKG represents atrial depolarization and not the sinus node depolarization. In fact, the only way to measure the time interval between the sinus depolarization and the atrial depolarization is with an electrode within the sinus node itself by means of invasive electrophysiological studies. P-wave, however, can be used as a surrogate to determine that atrial depolarization occurred secondary to sinus depolarization rather than any other pacemaker in the heart. This can be done using the P-wave shape and size in specific leads in the surface AKG, which gives an idea about the direction of atrial depolarization. For example, atrial depolarization when starting and propagating from the sinus node is downwards and to the left. And in such situation, it's exactly in the face of lead 2. Thus, positive P wave in lead 2 signifies sinus node depolarization. Another element about this complex sinus node structure is that, normally, the transitional layer will allow seamless conduction of the P-cell depolarization to the atrial muscle. However, because of the presence of this transitional layer, it becomes prone to conduction blocks. If the conduction out of the transitional layer to the atrium is slowed, there is a delay of the atrial depolarization, or sometimes complete loss of atrial depolarization, which occurs in situations such as sinus pauses. One last concept to review is overdrive suppression. At this point, we understand that the normal pacemaker of the heart is the sinus node, which initiates the depolarization wave that propagates throughout the heart with a rate that corresponds to the rate of the sinus node. In other words, 
Normally, the heart rate is the product of the sinus rate. However, we also understand that the sinus is not the only potential cardiac pacemaker, as other areas of the heart also have intrinsic automaticity. Only because the sinus has the fastest rate, it suppresses all other automatic foci. In this regard, and according to the order of automaticity rates discussed before, the automatic areas next in command to the sinus node are the AV node and the His bundle. The AV node and the His bundle only come to action if the sinus node significantly slows or stops depolarizing as happens in sinus pauses, or when the depolarization waves don't reach the ventricles despite normally originating in the sinus node, as happens in AV nodal block. For example, if the sinus node's depolarization fails for any reason, a pause occurs and the AV node, as second in command, kicks in and overrides as the pacemaker, escaping the occurrence of asystole. Also, this is called junctional escape rhythm. Note the absence of P waves during the pause and during the junctional escape rhythm. Another example, if the sinus node depolarizes normally, but the AV node fails to conduct for any reason, the ventricles don't see the SA nodal depolarization. And as such, to save the ventricles and to cause them to contract, the His bundle, which is next in command, kicks in and overrides as the cardiac pacemaker. Note here that this is an example of a complete AV nodal block and that both the sinus node and the junctional rhythms are occurring simultaneously but not related, which signifies AV dissociation. In this situation, the sinus node is not being obeyed because it's not resulting in ventricular contraction. To recap, remember, cardiac electrical activity is due to specialized cells that can generate as well as conduct electrical impulses. In the conduction system, automaticity is the highest at the level of the SA node and decreases downhill, and conduction speed is lowest at the level of the SA node and increases downhill to reach maximum in the Purkinje fibers. The AV node shows abrupt slowing of conduction velocity in the middle of the conduction system, causing AV delay and resulting in AV synchronized contraction. Remember, Radiarrhythmia are the results of partial or complete failure to generate or conduct impulses anywhere in the conduction system, but usually mostly clinically relevant at the level of the SA node and the AV node. In the approach to diagnose and treat radiarrhythmia, remember to ask yourself about the mechanism, the reversibility, and the symptomatic status. Remember that the SA node is composed of a core of P cells that generate the impulses surrounded by a layer of T-cells through which exit pathway exists to allow the impulse to reach the atrial muscles. And finally, remember that overdrive suppression is the ability of the next in order pacemaker to kick in to save the heart from going into a systole, either when the sinus node fails, such as in sinus pauses, or when the impulses don't reach the ventricles, such as in AV nodal block. That's all for now folks, until we see you again in another video with another cardiology key, have a great day.